Welcome to Sage Audio. Today we're talking about the top nine vocal processing hacks. But first, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com to receive a free mastered sample of it. Combine ambience and room reverb. Reverb can be used to create a sense of realism. If you're recording vocals in a dry room, try combining ambience and room reverb types to create a full vocal. I'll typically combine studio room emulation and general ambience. Liquid Sonic 7th Heaven is a good option for this, but use whatever reverb plugin you like and offers these styles of reverb. Let's take a listen to it. What you doing? Baby, you must think that I've been clueless. Darling, don't know who you think you're fooling. It ain't me though. New do this. Call me up and ask me at the blue, yeah. Girl, you got me feeling like I'm losing it. Use a subtle harmonizer. Like reverb, harmonizers can be great for creative effects, but they can also serve a very practical purpose. By setting up a send, harmonizing your main vocal, and subtly blending it in, your vocal will become full without the harmonies being consciously perceivable. I typically use full octave harmonies, but use any that work with the track's key. Let's take a listen. What you doing? Baby, you must think that I've been clueless. Darling, don't know who you think you're fooling. It ain't me though. You do this. Call me up and ask me at the blue, yeah. Girl, you got me feeling like I'm losing it. DS and subtractive EQ first. Before you introduce processors that amplify the signal, you need to DS and use subtractive EQ. This way, you attenuate any aspect of the vocal that shouldn't be amplified, resulting in a more balanced vocal down the line. If you use these processors later in your chain, you'll be fighting against your other forms of processing. Let's take a listen. What you doing? Baby, you must think that I've been clueless. Darling, don't know who you think you're fooling. It ain't me though. You do this. Call me up and ask me at the blue, yeah. Girl, you got me feeling like I'm losing it. Use a limiter for cleaner attenuation. If you're finding that your compressor is causing too much of a shift to your vocal's timbre, try a limiter and increase the gain while lowering the ceiling simultaneously. Limiters are often better at handling the full frequency spectrum without making noticeable changes, so they work well for this purpose. Since the voice is the most recognizable instrument, changes to its timbre are easy to hear, so find a super transparent limiter for the job. Let's take a listen. What you doing? Baby, you must think that I've been clueless. Darling, don't know who you think you're fooling. It ain't me though. You do this. Call me up and ask me at the blue, yeah. Girl, you got me feeling like I'm losing it. Combine upward and downward compression. Upward compression will increase the volume of your vocal from the floor up and downward compression from the peaks down. By combining the two, you can find the right balance between dynamic control and increased detail. I'll combine the Oxford inflator with the FabFilter Pro C2 for an example. Let's take a listen to it. What you doing? Baby, you must think that I've been clueless. Darling, don't know who you think you're fooling. It ain't me though. You do this. Call me up and ask me at the blue, yeah. Girl, you got me feeling like I'm losing it. Keep reverb as scents. Although most processing will go directly in the vocal chain, there are some good reasons to keep your reverb as scents, mainly in that it gives you greater control. I'm often shifting the balance between my reverbs, so it's much easier to simply adjust a channel strip. Additionally, it makes automating your reverb easier since you can automate the channel's fader instead of a function within the reverb. Let's take a listen. What you doing? Baby, you must think that I've been clueless. Darling, don't know who you think you're fooling. It ain't me though. You do this. Call me up and ask me at the blue, yeah. Girl, you got me feeling like I'm losing it. Attenuate two kilohertz on side image. When you're processing a vocal bus, it can help to use a mid-side EQ and attenuate some of the vocal range around 2 kHz. This way, 
the mid image of the vocal can cut through a little more. Doing this can alleviate masking in this range, so just listen intently to the side image to find the best part to cut. Let's take a listen. What you doing? Baby, you must think that I've been clueless. Darling, don't know who you think you're fooling. It ain't me though. You and ask me at the blue, yeah. Girl, you got me feeling like I'm losing it. Accent vowel frequencies. Sometimes a vocalist doesn't enunciate as much as needed, making the lyrics or general vocal indiscernible. To remedy this, a small bump at 500 Hz can make the vowels cut through, making the vocal easier to understand. Be careful not to amplify too much of 300 or 700 Hz, since this can have a negative effect on the vocal. Let's take a listen. What you doing? Baby, you must think that I've been clueless. Darling, don't know who you think you're fooling. It ain't me. You do this. Call me up and ask me at the blue, yeah. Girl, you got me feeling like I'm losing it. Remove nasal frequencies. A nasally vocal recording is pretty common, but fortunately, this is a pretty easy thing to fix. If you want to get rid of a nasally tone, slightly attenuate around 700 hertz and listen to find the exact center frequency. This is going to vary from vocalist to vocalist, so be sure not to always stick with 700 hertz, but use it as a good starting point. Let's take a listen. What you doing? Baby, you must think that I've been clueless. Darling, don't know who you think you're fooling. It ain't me though. You do this. Call me up and ask me at the blue. Girl, you got me feeling like I'm losing it. If you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com to receive a free mastered sample of it. Also, subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos. Thank you so much for watching.